it's possible to spend time and money on the wrong things. Trust me, I've done it. You got to figure who your target is. And I just saw two people on the screen about five minutes ago who fit line one here. Limited attention spans unlimited energy. And then there's adults who are sort of the opposite. And then there are teens who are a mystery to everybody but themselves. What level of knowledge do people have? Uh, there's no point in buying an eight inch Schmidt Cassegrain for a kid in grade six, because they won't know how to use it. They'll probably lose interest. So next one. Okay, preliminary considerations. A lot of us in the club are older. Uh, we have issues. What can we see? There's two types, small and bright, large and faint. And the same things don't work that well for both. And then resources. This is where the meat of it is. Uh, books, magazines, references, I think that's where you start. So age-related vision issues. Uh, I used to be 2010, went corrected, and now I'm not. Um, got some astigmatism and so forth, but glasses will generally help. But it does affect what you can use. So. Um, some of us have the beginning or advanced cataracts. Loss of night vision is fairly common and our pupils don't dilate. Uh, kids are really annoying. They can get their pupils out to seven or eight millimeters, uh, which means they can really use binoculars and with us, we can't. So what do you want to look at? Solar system, it's small, but it's well lit. You'll need high magnification uh, and a stable atmosphere. So that kind of says telescopes. If you're looking for stuff beyond the solar system, nebulae, galaxies, uh, you know, all the sort of things, star clusters and what all, you need more light. You can still use binoculars, but it shows you about 5% of what telescopes will show you. And the thing to remember, uh, a lot of people are terribly disappointed in this when they start out, because they get something to look at the sky with, and everything looks sort of pale gray green. And they're used to seeing you know, false color images taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. And it, it just doesn't look like those photo books. And that's a big turnoff for a lot of people. Um, I've shown people Saturn, which is one of the most spectacular things you'll ever see, but it doesn't look like the NASA images, which is disappointed about half the people. And the other half are just gobsmacked. So. You never really know. I would say the first thing, and by the way, this was the first thing I ever bought. That's my first edition of Night Watch, 1983. It's two feet away from me, sitting behind me on the couch. Uh, it's an excellent resource. And you can get it for $34.64 on Amazon. And that will be the fourth edition, which has a different cover and is probably, you can tell by the corners on this uh, and the scrapes and scratches, it's had a lot of miles. That's my copy. I'm keeping it. Another good one I'm told is this one. I haven't read it myself. Uh, Terrence Dickinson again and Alan Dyer. Uh, who should be well known to a lot of RESC types. And that one's 50 bucks on Amazon. And that's the coolest picture I've seen in a while. 
other resources. I started out with Astronomy Magazine. I had an, a subscription for about 10 years of still saved some of the issues that I used to like a lot. It's 50 bucks. I think that's US, I think. And you got print and digital access. I like both. I would say it's entry to intermediate level, but it will, it will get someone's attention, uh, particularly kids all the way up into university. They seem to thrive on it, I found. I know when I was doing a lot of in-house school astronomy lectures, um, quite a few of the kids wound up getting subscriptions to this. And I got the feedback later and that was thrilling. Sky and Telescope is a little more advanced, a little pricier, but it's got that uh, Stargazer or Skygazer's Almanac in there. You get a free copy of that. Okay. Whatever you do, don't buy this. Uh, you'll see them advertise, you know, super duper deluxe, you know, 500 power telescope. And up here, it's got a two inch lens made out of plastic. The mount, well, for, I'll just let you read it yourself. It will break your heart and soul. The best place for that is off the end of the Davis Bay Pier. By binoculars. So, the big thing about astronomy binoculars, they don't have to be super, super duper quality, you know, made of corrosion free pure titanium and so on. Uh, it would be helpful if they had good coated lenses. Don't buy cheap crap, you will regret it. The seven is the magnification, the 30 is the diameter of the objective lens. Eight by 50, slightly different. You can't go much beyond 10. I can manage 10 power binoculars, barely. But it, you look through them and Nothing is reversed or inverted, that's good. And you're used to using both eyes. And now that you can get uh, image stabilizing binoculars, you know, just a ching, um, it is kind of cool because I've used those and you can see the moons of Jupiter easily. Entry level scopes. Uh, Sky News Magazine had a good article on this. With these three items, they were all quite similar and they all got pretty good marks. Whoops, I went too fast, sorry about that. Um, binoculars look like this and they're a pair of refracting telescopes. And optically, they're, they're nearly magic. Uh, I'm. This should always be your first astronomical equipment purchase, in my humble opinion. Magnification. Um, yeah. You take the focal length of the telescope and divide it by the focal length of the eyepiece. Those are optical terms, yeah. They're printed on the scope, they're printed on the eyepiece. Do the math, there you go. Uh, I've got an eight inch Schmidt Cassegrain and a 25 millimeter eyepiece, you get 80 power. That's good for planets and stuff like that. Lovely. It says 60 per inch of aperture due to the diffraction of light. If you get 20 or 30 around here, you're doing beautifully. It's the limits of the atmosphere. You can get cheap stuff or you can drop a ton of money and get these things that are practically magic. Exotic glass, wild field of view, wide field of view and so on. And they're quite, they're just awesome. And why do you need magnification? Well, here's some objects and the size in arc seconds. This is the maximum for Mars. That's a third of a minute of arc. 
it's large enough that it, it doesn't twinkle like a star, but uh, it's just, you need the magnification. The Andromeda galaxy is four times the diameter of the moon, but it's very faint. And this is why it matters. So I don't know who took this picture. Oh, David. Well, anyway, there it is. September 11th, 2020. This was the astronomy picture of the day. And if this isn't a classic, I don't know what is. Uh, that's the moon just before it occults Mars. And how uh, this, this one, I'd die a happy man if that were my name down there. Here's another book I got about 20 years ago. The Handbook der Sternbilder by these guys. It's charts of the sky, all of it. Uh, it's black with white printing on it. And it's every constellation in the sky. It's a little deep. Uh, it may be out of print. I couldn't find it on Amazon. But if, you've, if you can find it, it's good to get somebody interested. And if you're really into it, these star charts are about, about 13 by, whoops, other way, 13 by 20. And I laminated mine, and I used to take them with me when I went observing. A little bit of overkill, I suppose, but they're definitely worth it. Sky Hat was 2000. If you can't find it on there, don't bother. You can't see it. So start with a pair of binoculars. If the person doesn't have them, get them. You got to find something you will use. Binoculars are portable. Uh, if you've got a 300 pound telescope, forget it. You won't be using it. And once we get this COVID thing, get up to the astronomy, to the observatory that we've got, um, you'll learn much more there. And if all else fails, give somebody a membership to the RASC. You can get the observer's handbook, regular meeting. Well, we used to have regular meetings. We certainly have knowledgeable lecturers and we used to have cookies. So, I mean, it, it's win, win, win. And that's about all I have to say. And now I will stop sharing. Wonderful, Richard. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you Richard. very much. Uh, uh, Richard, excellent, excellent. Richard, you didn't mention the fact that the club, again, when we have regular meetings, we, we also gather at places like the seawall down in Davis Bay with equipment. And that's, in the past, that's been a place that people would go and just have a look and see the equipment that's being used and uh, ask for advice. Will that start up again? I would certainly hope it would. Uh, it was one of the things that got me joining the club. I mean, I was a member in Calgary, you know, back before the earth cooled. Uh, but I joined up, what, three years ago, I think, here. And yeah, and then COVID came along and there, there went that. We don't blame you for that. No, it's no, not. we don't. But yes, this is Astro Cafe. He's talking about where we go have a coffee, and then if there was a sky, we go down to the seawall in Davis Bay, and the, anybody who came along could uh, view the sky with us. But uh, we'll, we'll get back to we will. Well, one of the things last July with Comet Neowise, I spent about five nights down at the Davis Bay Pier, and I was carrying around the, the club's. Uh, image stabilizing binoculars, which are, I think they're 10 by 30s, mm -hmm. which of course is ridiculous for a pair of binoculars, but they're image stabilizing, so you can use 10 power. And I probably showed 50 or 100 people 
the moons of Jupiter. And they couldn't, you know, people are just going, what? So yeah, that, that personal interaction. Um, <laughs> that, that was just huge fun. Yeah. And see a, a comet that most people, well, I've seen half a dozen of them, but you know, most people haven't. So mm -hmm. that's the neat part. So Richard, the, um, the you jumped off the the one page um, that was showing the different uh, telescopes because if somebody yeah, has if somebody if somebody has a um, has a pair of binoculars or they don't want to use the binoculars because hey I really have my heart set on a telescope. Uh, can you go over those uh, telescopes again, please? Yeah, the Sky News Magazine, November, December, 2020. Good reason not to throw out all your magazines. Hmm. And a, a cost of, of uh, $250 plus, uh, that's, that's actually pretty reasonable for, for these things. Yeah, I mean, compared to what it cost 30 years ago, you can get a lot better scopes for, you know, comparatively less money than it was 30 years ago. Um, and I mean, there was talk before we got this meeting going that uh, somebody has managed to hook Harry up with a device, he, you know, something he can set his, his uh, phone up against the eyepiece of his telescope and take pictures. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to learn what the hell that's about. So <laughs> come and see me. I have one of those. Um, those yeah, well, that's an interesting set of recommendations. They were all refractors, 80 millimeter refractors. And that, that's a good telescope. It's remarkable how prices have come down. Yeah. And I mean, I got my scope, I think, in. 82 or 83 and it was used then now it's got good optics it's a a mead schmidt cassegrain um, eight inch and it was very good at the time uh, but i mean uh my god if you wanted to get a four inch refractor on a tripod yeah i mean you're, you're talking thousands then and they didn't have go to and the the drives, you know, were clunky and you had to pull or align the hell out of it to do anything with it. And it was just, ugh. now, you know, it's duck soup. So yeah, things are good. Also, it should be mentioned that uh, on a pretty regular basis, people will call the center and say, I have this telescope collecting dust can you use it? And so check with us because sometimes we've got the telescope you're looking for just needs a home. We've found homes for lots of telescopes for people. So, okay. Last Thank year, um, last year, my son <clears throat> won this telescope at the Alberta Star Party. Oh, oh wow. Uh, oh, Celestron 70 millimeter. And it's again, it's also one of those like really affordable, like it's probably even less than $200, but the mount is kind of just like a camera tripod, like pretty much exactly like a camera tripod. You can like, you know, just swing it around, point it wherever. Super, super easy, but like the optics in it are actually impressive. Like it can uh, split the double double and like on the planets it gives like a very good crisp image it's it's pretty impressive for such a low cost telescope mm. Mm. good yeah. Yeah. very interesting 